there's a lot of things we have to worry about when we're dealing with a lapel guard player because they really can grab anything. They can grab either side of the belt, they can grab the lapel, they can put their foot in the lapel, they can take their foot out of the lapel. They have options everywhere. That's what happens when you study the lapel encyclopedia. You just have so many options and that's why it can become a tunnel vision style of jiu-jitsu because there's just so much to do and so much to learn that if you're in the more beginning side of your jiu-jitsu journey, like from purple belt and below, it can be very addictive to like figure out all these moves and they're so effective and you just do them, do them, do them. So if you're dealing with someone like that who's committed to the, the game, you have to be ready for all the different attacks they're gonna do. And one of the things that people are really good at, or at least people who play a lot of lapel, they know what to do when you don't let them put their feet in the intermediary positions. And one of those things is the lapel wrestling style, right? If I control his legs and I don't let him get to like a worm guard position, he's just gonna pass it to 90s worm. So this is 90s worm here, okay? So this was the, this was the lapel guard before I showed up. This is what it looked like. It was like Bernardo Faria, um, Tanquino used this a little bit. I mean, it was a common thing to like reinforce your half guard with the lapel under. The big difference is when you put a foot in here in the wormhole, then you can take people's backs and like arm bar them and do all sorts of stuff. But from here, it's pretty simple. It's either just get up and take them down or try and like go into quarter guard and look for like a, a bump in the butt to like bring me forward and then come up and do something like that. So 90s worm, luckily, is super easy to counter. It's like stupid easy, but you have to, use a dance move, okay? And this is called the Eddie Gordo counter, the Eddie Gordo pass. So when someone, when I don't let them get their feet in the lapel, as they pull and maybe I put their feet down, they sit up and go right to a position like this where they pass the lapel underneath my leg here, especially when coupled with like a shin, a, a shin to shin, this is really dangerous because if he pulls me forward, he can elevate that and get me in all sorts of trouble. And here, now you're really screwed here because you can set up the single leg X-worm, the reverse X-worm, all sorts of crazy positions. So we can't sit there, we can't just wait. Hesitation is the enemy of, a, of a, someone who's trying to pass lapel guard. So when he passes this grip here like this, let's turn this way, and just put me in the normal one for now, no shin to shin. Now look, my foot, my foot is usually gonna be facing him here, but I wanna turn my toes away, so I'm like, turning like this, like I'm trying to turn my butt towards him. But at the same time, I continue pushing him away and he's gonna be trying to push into me. So my hands on his back of his collar, trying to push him away. He's trying to sit up. And what this does is it allows me to release the position and I'm gonna turn this way. And as I turn, I'm gonna do the Eddie Gordo move. This is a capoeira kick. Now I am a green cordal in capoeira, so you should practice this before attempting such a advanced maneuver. But I just lean turn, lift my leg, and I just do a full spin. Hiya! And then from here, he's left with a lapel with no control. And I can immediately drop into a knee cut position and he's left holding the lapel. And I'm in a good spot. So this, the faster you do this, the better. So the second someone sets up the grip, just like that. You can just do it casually. If you build the muscle memory to just Every time someone grabs their lapel and passes it under for 90s worm, you just, that's the green light to spin. You need to engage before he has a chance to try and pass the lapel again, because if I move, he'll just do it again. But luckily I can just do it again too. If he passes it again, I can just spin again. Just make sure that you don't leave your foot behind because you can hurt your knee. If your toes get caught on their pants or they're sitting on your foot, if I try and turn, I can hurt my knee, I could tear my ACL. So I have to make sure before I do this that my toes are free and turned, like this. Both feet go down, or both hands go down, and I just bring it over. I don't kick him in the face or hit him with my leg. So you go extra high. And then I like to go right to an underhook. Sliding into like a knee cut position. <laughs> 